1945, June sometime, lights out. My late parents, who I trust must have loved each other in unobserved ways, <laughs> are conjoined in some form of awkward carnal embrace, and I am conceived. A miracle of sorts, this being 10 years after their first child, the prince, was born, and eight years after their last child, the princess, had, by all accounts, ended their mutual affections and their child-bearing lives. Perhaps it was a celebration of the World War coming to an end? My mother's birthday present? An accident after one too many old fashions with the Sussmans? <laughs> I don't know. But nine months later, I'm pretty sure my arrival at 135-18 77th Avenue in Flushing was cheered as if I was the new family puppy. <laughs> and so from early on, as I peered out the window of our garden apartment and saw my big brother escaping down the street with a Louisville slugger over his shoulder, big mitt slung through the barrel, I was not in the least forlorn that he said I could not tag along. I just figured he had better plans for me. Ice cream from the bungalow bar, trip to Ebbets Field, and later, after we had moved to the Burbs, whenever my big sister Marge's teenage friends from Mineola High rolled Levi's, thick white cotton socks, red kids, cooed over me as if I was cute as a beagle, I understood that I was cute as a beagle. <laughs> so, Picture calendar pages in 1940s movies flipping up in the wind and suddenly it's more than six decades later and our mother has just passed away, leaving us senior citizen orphans. My brother and sister, hale and hearty into their 70s, are still around and all evidence to the contrary, I'm still the baby of the family. <laughs> As we three siblings are meeting to discuss funeral arrangements, I detect something akin to mild annoyance from my older brother, something I have never noticed before. Is that a scowl? A sneer? I don't know. I look over at my sister to check. Her smile lets me know I'm still cute as a beagle, <laughs> albeit a 420-year-old beagle. <laughs> Maybe it's just indigestion. But then it happens again a week later, and when we get together to discuss the complicated logistics of legal probate in New Jersey, there it is, again, that, sm that scowl. And I thought I was wagging my tail in the most charming of ways. <laughs> So I check with my sister once again, still a beagle, but like a tiny flea bite that overtakes all other matters in a life full of grace, I can't stop scratching. It nags at me back home in the Hudson Valley, drives me to tail chasing distraction as I teach a class on sibling rivalry in King Lear. Could he have had indigestion for a whole week? Maybe I should call him and suggest a colonoscopy. <laughs> so the next time we meet, I whisper to my sister Marge, who was always a second mother to me, and sometimes the first, I think John's mad at me. Then I snort, as if that is the most absurd thing I've said in years, <laughs> waiting for her to assure me in her most motherly fashion that it simply isn't possible. But Marge glances over at me with clouds of pity in her eyes, as if I am as dumb as a beagle. <laughs> as if it might indeed be time to put the little pooch down. 
and after a pause, with what appears to be a smile squiggling across her face, she says, Steve, John's been furious with you since the moment you were born. You ruined everything. 